Hello and welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled Dynamic Access Control Part 1, Configuring Claims. My name is Tim Warner. Microsoft has given us plenty of new features in their Windows Server 2012 release, one in particular that we're going to spend time on today and in a number of future installments of these micro nuggets is Dynamic Access Control, also called DAC. Dynamic Access Control is a data governance technology that works along with NTFS permissions and shared folder permissions. Historically in Windows, we provide authorization to file system resources by using this combination. Shared permissions will make a folder available on your network, and NTFS permissions, which apply to both folders and files, grant or block users based on their identity in Active Directory. Now the problems with that that Microsoft seeks to solve with dynamic access control is number one, as companies get larger and larger, they scale up and out, it becomes more and more cumbersome to juggle Active Directory groups in these discretionary access control lists. A second problem with this is that just using NTFS and share permissions along with traditional Windows Server auditing, object access auditing that is, doesn't give some shops enough detail to satisfy the regulations that they may be subject to. These could be industry standard regulations, they could be regulations put in place by your country's government. That's what we mean by data governance. We're able to granularly track this access, provide an audit trail, in addition to granting what's called least privilege to our users. You'll recall that least privilege states that your users in your domain should have enough privilege to get to the files they need to get to and to make operations on those files to their level of access that they need, but no more. All right, what is dynamic access control practically speaking? Here's the deal, friends. There's really three main sides to this triangle. Number one, we can classify our data. We can provide taxonomic tags to assign semantic meaning to your file system resources. In fact, perhaps in another video, I'll show you File Server Resource Manager and that we can actually have it schedule automatic scrubs and automatic classification for your shared folders. Really powerful stuff just that going that far. On the other side of the coin, we have our users and computers for which we can configure claims. That's what we're doing in this installment of the MicroNugget series. A claim is simply some attribute from Active Directory. They're sourced in Active Directory schema that is presented with the user's access token besides their Active Directory group memberships, their name, and their password. We need to enable Kerberos Armoring to do this. Basically, Kerberos Armoring enables the user's access token on your domain to extend to bring in those additional claim properties. The third side of this triangle with DAC is the central access policy, which is where we can use conditional logic to tie together our taxonomic tags that we've placed on our shared folders and the claims that we have associated with our users and computers and provide very granular access and auditing indeed. The fact that we can audit using conditional statements as well is going to give us less auditing volume and more bang for our buck with our auditing infrastructure. Let me give you a brief demo on configuring claims in dynamic access control. For starters, we configure dynamic access control either by using PowerShell or by using the Active Directory Administrative Center. If you're still tied to Active Directory users and computers, you better get used to the DSAC. In fact, we can start the DSAC by typing DSAC from a command prompt. From the navigation tree, we can select dynamic access control and we can see those three sides of the proverbial triangle. Claims, resource properties, which refer to the metadata tags for our files and folders, and then the central access policies. We'll get to all that in the future. For now, let's double click and look at our claims. I've created one, as you see here, called department that maps to the department schema attribute. Now, where are these attributes coming from? I mentioned they're coming from Active Directory. What that means, for instance, if I can just sidetrack us for a minute, I can open up a user account we can drill into any of these displayed properties or even going beyond what's shown here in the user's property sheet as long as you know what a particular attribute is named in Active Directory in the schema you can get to it. So if we want to 
create conditional access claims based on department, which would be populated right here, we can do that. If we want to classify by their location, their city, their state, all of these are eminently accessible. So let's again come back to claim types. We can right click new claim type and we're given all of the schema attributes here. You can filter the list if you know basically what you're looking for. If I'm looking for country, for instance, I can type country and it brings us these here that are matches. Now, the actual display name for the country name property is just C, strangely enough. We'll want to give that a more meaningful name over here. Associate this with users, but you can do user or computer. And then you can optionally suggest values in advance. This makes it easier when you're making your central access policies later to avoid data entry errors. So I'm going to say the following values are suggested. We'll click Add. Let's say we have two locations, one in Japan. I'm providing a value and a display name here, and another for US. By default, anything you create here is protected from accidental deletion. And what that means is, in here, if I or someone else were to try to delete this, they would get stopped in their tracks. See, it tells us you do not have sufficient credentials, it's protected. It's a nice safeguard that you might want to keep enabled just as a general practice. So that is the basic mechanics of the claim type. And again, you're just thinking of Active Directory properties for your users and even your devices that you may want to use in dynamic access control, access control lists. We'll pick up the next step of the process, which is going to be configuring our resource properties and resource property lists in part two of this Micro Nugget series. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.